Okay, try to. I didn't have the audio on previously. This is Miss Brenner. I am assigned to grade your AP Art History class. It is virtual. I did not create the content, but I think that it's developed very well. It's new to me as well, so I'm trying to stay ahead of you guys by a few weeks. But I'm going to do my best to help you understand the way that they have it laid out and then add in additional resources to do everything at all possible to help you be successful on the final exam May 6th to pass and earn college credit. Um, above all and else, I really hope that throughout this course you understand how vital art has always been throughout our lives as humans across all civilizations, all places, all time periods, and all belief systems. Um, art just communicates who we are as people and what we experience and our feelings, and I think that's pretty cool. So, first of all, you will need to do the getting started, the things to know. You have several ways to access the content. If it says one of two, you can either navigate by clicking down through that arrow or you can hit the next and it will progress through as well. Anytime you see these little icons, I would be sure to click everything. This has a way for you to do notes online if you prefer. The glossary gives you definitions for words. I think the print tab is pretty helpful if you have a way to print, if you prefer to have a, a handout of something. The art index, there are 250 works of arts that we will be covering in this class for to prepare you for the test. So that gives you access to each one of those. Uh, the objectives tells you what you're expected to know and learn and do. And then this shows you how far you are in the lesson and what you have completed. And then this tab says it's the fastest route to go back to the home page to go left and right. So we finished this. I can click next for things to know. We have the galleries. Uh, click on any of these blue tabs. Make sure you read through those. Anything you're, that you skip, you're just cutting yourself short of understanding what's expected of you. Click next. What you need to know, we will be giving you guys a book for reference only. You don't have to read anything specific out of it. This is going through two of five. Again, three of five, so you can go through all of this or you can click to the side. This tells you the type of quizzes that you will have. The tests are not presented in formats of you need to have five sentences or 10 sentences. Instead, it's by time. So there's either a 15 minute or a 30 minute and you are doing your best to respond to the prompt. And I will help you understand the best way to break down the prompt and respond appropriately. Then it has collaboration pieces where you guys will actually evaluate each other and grade your own, grade each other's work too. So I have gone through all of those. This college board website has additional resources and practice tests. I emailed you a link to join our specific group. Then pacing through the course, I would really recommend that you set up a designated time every day that you log in just like you would a class that you go in person or a job that you go to. And then academic integrity, making sure that you're submitting your own work. Go through all of that. Then it has getting started and uh, the collaboration there. I think if we do this, it's gonna take us back to the start. So we have done all of these for the getting started. Then for gallery one, it has the introduction and the diagnostic test. So if you read all this information, this breaks down the frameworks for the class, what you're expected to know, learn and do go through all these objectives. Um, 
um, there will be a practice test that does not count against you, but it is 40 questions. You click the start and it just wants to get gauge where you are in your understanding, your awareness, what you've seen before. This is all the prehistoric. So it's 40 questions. You can save and exit if you just need to take a break. I would not cheat yourself out of this. Just honestly answer what you feel like you know and then submit all the answers when you're finished with that. Then you're going on to the next part. Talks about aesthetics versus our history. And you'll just navigate through each piece. If you want to click on something to view it individually, you can do that. Scroll through. Uh, this, I feel like, is very well put together. So it is a mnemonic device to help you understand questions to analyze a work of art. And they abbreviate it as Funky Caravaggio Flips to Picasso Song. Caravaggio and Picasso are both famous artists. So the funky represents focus. What does the artist want us to look at when you when they create a piece, whether it's a painting, a photograph, a video, or a sculpture, what are they wanting you to see? Where does your eye travel throughout the image? What stands out? The formal elements, um, I sent you guys a link to all of those in our Google Classroom. Caravaggio is for the content, what's the subject, and all of these questions. Flips is the function, why was it created, and there are more questions to dig into there. Tradition, um, what cultural traditions could have impacted this? Were there any rituals that were connected to it? The patron is who made the artist or who paid to have it made. Was it a church? Was it a person? Was it just for artistic expression? And then the setting, where was it created? When was it made? Where was it originally located? Because you guys are seeing these works of arts in the museum. So you have to think back to the exact place that it was created, why it was created, and if it had a function beyond just looking at it. Historical significance, is there a ritual surrounding it? So this is a little um, image that I also put in our resource notes that you can find in our Google Classroom. These themes are put together very well. The sub themes, you can click on these blue tabs and it gives you more information. I like how concise these are. I just really feel like this is put together well. The art index allows you to see um, all the works that we'll be studying throughout this course. It says to look at the natural world, one of the themes. I'm going to highlight this fruit and insects, and I'm going to go to our art index. Pops open another tab. I can paste that in here, hit enter, and I can look at this work of art. Why is this considered the theme of the natural world instead of knowledge and belief or power? Well, obviously, it has insects and fruit, which are part of the natural world, and then you can learn more about this as we go through the course. Um, another example would be for knowledge and power, the Virgin of Guadalupe. Some of you are probably familiar with this work. Some of you may even have it in your homes or you've seen it at a place of worship, but why does this represent knowledge and belief? It has religious significance. So then going through six, the skills and big ideas that we will learn as we go through this course and what you'll have to be able to do on the AP art history exam, each one of these eight skills. And the lesson summary. So then you go to the bottom, it says the analysis of art, I think, was that the very first thing that we did? This is going through um, the next section. The elements of art are broken up here. So if you skip ahead and 
you do this, it, you will have no idea what the, the assignment is. So if you do that, just go back to where you were and then scroll through, go through all four of these and then it will give you the assignment here. So review the instructions and it will tell you what you're expected to do. Use the funky Caravaggio flips Picasso song to research the following work. So beaker with Ibex motifs, the anthropomorphic steel and the Jade Kong. Use your art snapshot. So if you click on that link here, it downloads a Google I mean, it's not a Google, it's Microsoft Word. If you want, you can save this as a Google spreadsheet. You can do File, Save As, and then save it to your computer. Um, then we can go in and upload it onto Google Classroom. So this I may have to do an additional video for to really help you with that. Um, or I may just send this to you guys. I think I'm just going to send it in our Google Classroom so you'll know exactly what you're expected to do. And then you will submit it in the next activity. So I'm going to stop there. This video is already pretty long, but let me know if you have questions.